Um, I think the biggest thing to uh, for all of us here is that you must be interested in networking if you come to this this evening's topic workshop dialogue. I, I am going to do a bit of a slide presentation for you. Some of it will move fairly fast. Most of you probably know me. I've introduced myself to you either directly or we've had contact over this year or previous years. Some of you, of course, we know uh, from welcoming into the family through our mentorship program or through uh, uh, various other activities that we have here at NORCAT. Uh, we are so multidimensional in what we do that I think it gives us an agility to meet people from across the spectrum of Sudbury, from all walks, from those who work underground to those who fly planes to get us to Toronto, to those who sell us homes, to those who do our banking. There's Lindsay, she should, she's all worried about banking right now. But um, we just, they could be our neighbors. You could be our neighbors, I don't know. Uh, how many of you are, are introverts? Yeah, I, I got one hand or two. Kyle, you raised your hand. Well, that's really interesting. <laughs> many of us are reluctant extroverts. How many of you would classify yourselves as that? And if you're not an extrovert in today's world, how do you get the message out to people that you're, one, maybe looking for work, or two, have a product to sell, or three, are marketing something for somebody else? Can you imagine being the head of a marketing department and not being extroverted? It would be like, I have some products, but I can't tell you about them. I maybe have some products, but anyways. So today's topic is making it a success. Now, so really, whether you're an extrovert or introvert, or whether you're a reluctant extrovert, or any of the categories that fit, you want to be a success. Don't, don't guess, pigeonhole, pigeonhole yourself. You're going to do well at this. We have to, we're part of a network, right? So um, how many of you have been to Walmart lately? Mm. From this day forward, I solemnly promise and declare that every customer that comes within 10 feet of me, I will smile, look them in the eye, and greet them, so help me, Sam. Do you, do you remember that pledge? I, I bet you, I, in fact, I thought of you when I pulled this out. The, uh, can you imagine, many of the employees who went to work there, uh, ha, well, not many, all of them had to do this, but it's sort of fallen by the wayside if you've been to Walmart lately, have you? It's like they don't... I don't find them quite as welcoming as they used to be. In fact, if you're running a retail business, my goodness gracious me, if you don't reach out and say hi to people, what do you think customers are going to do? If they've come in that door, they're probably going to go out the same door, aren't they? So let's have a look at some of the ways to make it a success. So I hear this from people. I hate networking. Like you can't say that. I love networking. I thought I'd just include a few pictures of people that I network with. It really doesn't matter their age, their socioeconomic background, their potential, their past history. They're just people. And those of you who were in my group last week, uh, I think there were a couple of people from, um, uh, what's, what's, uh, what's the fitness group called that we use here? Quite, uh, uh, New Day Wellness and they were supposed to send some people today. I gave a, a talk last week on, on business cards. How many of you have business cards? How come the rest of you don't have business cards? You should have business cards. We talked about some of the factors that really are useful in introducing yourself. And I guess if you really hate networking, you probably don't have a business card. But if you do love networking and you like to meet perhaps our member of parliament, perhaps our uh, head of the Sudbury Symphony Orchestra, or John Lindsay, who's busy everywhere. I don't know if those of you know John Lindsay. You're going to shake hands with him. You're going to say hello. And uh, how many of you know all the neighbors on your street? Oh, uh, see, that's interesting, isn't it? Maybe we don't want to, right? But uh, th it might be very important to you in some way. So is there a secret sauce to all this? Yeah, you read the slide. It says, no, of course there isn't a secret sauce. Uh, in reality, though, how many of you know how to drive a car? How many of you can drive a transport? OK, uh, I have a license that allows me to do that as well. Uh, the reality is there are some things that are skills that we have to jump hoops to do. 
networking and being successful in business, nobody actually gives you those skills, do they? You have to work at them, you have to acquire them, you have to, there's much of it is soft skills, right? Here's, yeah, it is, you know what I mean? I'm gonna point you out and say, is that true? Of course it is. Um, so, magic, no. Can you practice that? Can you practice and become more successful? So the answer, of course, is yes. And, and how do you do that? Well, you come to something like this, right? And here we are today, so I'm gonna try and give you some hints as well on how to do this. Uh, so, uh, Harvard, Harvard Business Review. We hear this all the time from executives and other professionals. They tell us networking makes them uncomfortable and phony, even dirty. I don't know if that's true anymore, but I think some people do think, I, I don't wanna do this. Like, I, even giving up business cards. How many of you buy 100 business cards? Do you buy 200 business cards? When you, when you go to Vistaprint, you know, it comes in 250 or whatever, 500. I usually go for the 1,000 because, I, but I don't take, pass them out like snow. I, I very specifically target where I'm going to use them. Um, shared interests, more authentic. A absolutely. How many of you are where you want to be in life? Ah, that's interesting. Oh, good. Somebody says yes. If you're not where you want to be, why would you use networking to get, now I'm saying that networking is kind of a tool to help move things forward. I'm not saying you should be out there using people and stepping on their shoulders or, or crawling over them to get to some goal that you've got. But guess what? If I meet you and I express some interest, uh, are you into gardening? Used to be. Used to be. Okay, uh, are you into wine? Oh yeah. Oh, you're into wine too? Okay, well we're, I think we're all into wine, but uh, if I express that to you and you said, oh, I know of a wine club that's happy, having an event on Monday, would you like to come? Well, suddenly I meet somebody new who says to me, well, gosh, you know what? I'm looking for a person just like you. Do you see where it happens? And I think I've got a slide a little later on. Do you know how Bill Gates, well, no, I'm gonna save it till later. I'm gonna save it till later. Um, how many people also say things like, I don't waste time on networking? Well, at your peril. Um, it's a powerful tool. It can expose you to other people or opportunities. It's essential in business. It really is. It can redefine you. So what is a network, really? It's an arrangement of intersecting horizontal... No, that's, that's just math. How about the next one? A group or system of interconnected people, like a trade network. Yeah, that's more like it. Um, I'm a marketer. I blog about marketing. This next person says, I have a podcast that, about marketing bloggers. Next one says, I tweet about podcasters that talk about marketing bloggers. The next one says, I have a Facebook group that, uh, for Twitter users that tweet about podcasters that talk about marketing bloggers. So can you take all this a little too far? Absolutely. Uh, Kyle, how many tweets did, was I putting out at one point in time? Exactly. It's true. But that was, I was trying to make Twitter more, have more traction here in Sudbury. I was trying to make it work better because it was the only city that I knew where Twitter really wasn't working well. Let me ask you this question. And it's, Kyle got a message from me midweek, mid, mid evening on, on some night and I said, I was gonna call this talk something terrible about Facebook. Um, if you think that you can make your business run and be successful using Facebook, I've got news for you. It may work in Sudbury, but it doesn't work just about anywhere else. It really doesn't. You should use other platforms, right? If you use your business, I hope it doesn't work on Facebook. No, no, okay, good. So uh, it, remember this too, networking is not advertising. Uh, individuals, common interest, supportive system. Absolutely go back to the thing, hey, I know somebody who can do this for you. I can work with you. All those things are true. Okay, audience participation. Why are you here? You don't know, oh no, no, you gotta come up with a better answer than that. I know you're gonna give me an answer. Uh, I mean, like for this session? Yes. Or the start of well, for this session, let's do this session. Let's be more specific. Is, is half my life. Uh, so you do it well, you could, you, I think you should be up here. I've watched you, you're a good networker. I like it. I don't do it to sell my product 
no, no. I do it because I want to know more about people. I have a special envelope at home where I slide all the business cards, the business card that I collect, and I put it in the envelope. Ask them. And did they come? Next time. Yes. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. What do we do with business cards when we get them? You know, we'll hold on to that question for just a moment. I know you're a great networker. I've watched you work. It's part of her job. It's part of her job. What, did you come to it naturally, or did you have to work at it? Excellent. I love that. And why are you here this evening if you're a great networker? Okay, very valid answer. What if I told you that I may be able to give you something that improves your networking by 1%? Would you do it? Sure, okay. Let's hope I've got that 1%. Right, let's hope I've got that 1% for you. Uh, in a business that maybe is worth, say it's worth $5 million worth of business a year, or a million, let's just take a million. If I could improve it by 1%, would that make a significant difference to your bottom line? There's Barb, she's nodding, absolutely, definitely. So in your world, if you sell one more unit, what, it, what will that do for you? Are there sales targets that you sometimes are set for you that you have to achieve? Yes. And would one more unit make a difference? Get you closer to the target or further over. Ah, so can networking help you in that? Absolutely. Okay, I just bought a photocopier. You know what, Philip gave me fantastic service. If you ever need a photocopier, I've got Philip's business card. I've just used networking to solve two problems, both his sales target and my need or my friend's need. Yeah, I, I love networking for that. I really do. Callum, why are you here? I wanted to hear you talk about networking. You, but you know you can do that anytime, right? Yeah. Right. Callum's here quite often. It's, I think you're a great networker. You're just at that cusp of growing into it, though. I don't think, though, that many people are really born to it. Although, when we were talking earlier, we were talking earlier, uh, Barb and, and Susie, we were talking about the fact that I think just like, do you remember Chicken Soup for the Soul? Do you remember the book? Mm -hmm. Do you remember there's another one, Everything I Learned About Life I Learned in Kindergarten? I think that's the title, pretty close to that. Um, I think that some of us were born good networkers or acquired the skills very quickly so that we, we could move forward, so we could be better at what we do, so we could be part of a community. Now, uh, we don't have sound, and, but I would recommend very strongly, we have this wonderful tool called the internet. Has anybody used it lately? Yeah, well, um, this is from uh, Kids in the Hall. There is a video, if you just go to YouTube and look up funny networking videos, you will see, uh, I can't describe to you except to say that if you remember the Ministry of Silly Walks, from Monty Python. Kids in the Hall do a similar sketch basically on networking. So I'll leave that to you. You'll need to do that. Funny networking. Funny networking on just on YouTube. Kids in the Hall. So do we network when we need something? Sure. Do we use it to find solutions? Here's one of the things. Too many people think networking is really, again, just to benefit you in some ways. Well, what if there's no benefit to you? What if it just connects you to others and maybe you can benefit them? Maybe you can expand your reach. Maybe you can improve sales. Your position, your status. Can you improve yourself? In fact, that's really what you're saying. You're just using it to elevate your own abilities, right? Your own personality. Well, you just never know who the next person talks to because you're giving information that's so key to getting something that you need to do at or that you know somebody's looking for exactly that fit, and you go, oh, hey, we need something different. 
bang. I was sitting in an airplane at Christmas time, heading out of uh, Sudbury to Toronto, and I thought, I have a spare seat beside me. I have a spare seat beside me. Please do not let somebody sit beside me. Do not let that big guy who's coming up towards the plane sit beside me. Please. And lo and behold, he comes and he sits beside me. And I think, oh, no. Okay, let's try and battle over who's going to get the armrest. And then I turned around and I realized it was Jacob Verheden, and we had a wonderful talk the whole way down. And it changed my perspective on who my seatmate is because I'm kind of protective of my, my space. And I shouldn't be. I should just be welcoming. Um, are you a networking novice? Okay, but you're here. You identified some need. Or someone else. Have you ever told him that he should network better? He brought you here. So he said, okay. So you've read of the possibilities. You've not been using your superpowers, right? Because everybody's got networking superpowers. They just don't use them very often. And you wish to affect change, absolutely. So what tools are available? Um, how many of you use LinkedIn? I'm going to do a special little thing on LinkedIn later. How many of you use uh, Twitter? Yeah, I can raise both hands on that. How about blogging? It's kind of, I don't know. What, what did we say blogging today? No, something is the new blogging. Podcasting is the new blogging, right? Absolutely. Uh, do you email people? Uh, you said you get a bunch of, of uh, cards. Do you send out a card, uh, an email the minute you get the card? It was been a pleasure meeting you. I, I, I hope we can connect. I, I hate to tell you this. It's kind of been my modus operandi. I actually will. If you give me a card, I probably will send you an email right away. No, you don't have to give it to me right away. But it, Kyle knows this, right? I do it. In fact, Kyle, if you reach into the, just, Kyle, can you pull one of my Rolodexes out? Everybody knows what a Rolodex is? If you don't, look this way. Can you pull out a second one? And then there's a whole box of new ones, and then. Fantastic, I love it. Uh, how do we retain data? I mentioned, so now you've seen a Rolodex. There are actually electronic Rolodexes. You just use your phone and take a picture, and it's an app. It organizes it alphabetically by company. How do you want to do it? Um, I would recommend very, so notes of appreciation. So this is the actual mail. Who uses mail? You use mail? Fantastic. I'm, I'm looking forward to one. Uh, so what do we have to do? Oh, yeah, connections, places you and other webs. Uh, community practice. Does everybody know what a community practice is? It's basically so if you're in your industry, you get to know people who are also in that industry. And you're in your so photocopying, you don't necessarily think of them as competition, you think of them as colleagues. Okay, maybe not, but you know, sometimes when you're selling things, especially things like cars and products, you, you know, yes, there is a, there's only so much money to go around and they're only going to buy one. Uh, professional personal development, job finding, absolutely. In today's world, networking is a necessity. A mountain of research shows that professional networks lead to more jobs and business opportunities, broader, deeper knowledge, improved capacity to innovate. Nurturing professional relationships also improve the quality of work and increases job satisfaction. I love it when people come to the front desk or come into NORCAT generally, and I know them. I, they say my name. I say their name back. How many of you have little devices, little aid memoirs to say, well, that's Susie. I've met Susie before. Susie just walked in the door. Hi, Susie. I, how many of you do that? Uh, actually, there's all kinds of techniques out there. We'll talk about it in a minute. When do you network? Every time you possibly can. Uh, sure you can, over coffee, at work, on courses, in lines, at meetings. When you don't need something, when you do need something. In an airplane, in an airplane absolutely. Uh, it says that. You're right on, right, on, right on mark. On buses, in lines, at meetings, social activities, anywhere. And those of you who were in my class workshop last week, you know how to present a business card better. We tend to just... We shake hands loosely. We hand out business cards just like their paper. Well, they are, but they're much more than that. Um, make eye contact with people. Shake hands. Active listening. Check credentials. Send follow-ups. Feed your relationships. So before everybody arrived here today, I was actually watering all the plants in the building. You have to water your network. If you don't reach out, I'd say, how many of you on LinkedIn 
actually see little um, remarks that come your way. Like, it's the fourth year anniversary for Kyle's position at NORCAT, or uh, the fifth year, isn't it? Five years, five years. And so what do you do? Do you just go, oh, or do you send them a note? Say, hey, Kyle, fantastic. I remember the day you started. You've got to feed your relationships. OK, who's in your network? Phil, this is a tough one. You know those Rolodexes over there? For every one that makes it, there's probably about three that go out. And I prune routinely. Since we talked about gardening or watering my plants, uh, watering Lori's plants, they're not really my plants. <laughs> they're Norcat's plants. I, uh, I do toss quite a few. I really do. I don't keep them all. You can't keep them all. You would be overwhelmed by the number of cards that come your way. Does that mean you're being mean to some or, or exclusive to others? I don't know. What do they do with your card? What do you think most people do with cards that they get? Well, they stuff them in their pocket. They get home. They put a, hang up their jacket. And two weeks later, they put on their jacket. And they take out the card, and it says, it says Philip's name on it. You go, Philip? I don't, what does Philip do? Oh, oh, he sells photocopy. Oh, so, right? It's unfortunate. Most, we recognize that happens. Oh, I was going to get, now I, I won't do this with you, but I'll tell you about it. I was going to do a little exercise. It's different, uh, we need a certain number of people to do it. Um, the question is, are you in a constellation? or So the solar system, right? Are you one of the planets that's circling, or are you the sun? I, you know, what are you in your community? Do you, do you want to just be somebody who circles, or, or do you want to be part of somebody who makes decisions, who empowers others, who provides energy to, to make things happen? Yeah, so my hint was team, community, duty, roles, priorities. What do you want out of your position, your business, your network. So, okay, I wear a pocket poof. I'll admit to it. Yes, I do. Uh, I come out of the closet about pocket poofs. I really do like them. And socks, too. Now, do you do these kind of things? Do you do these kind of things because you, you have to? No, but I will tell you, if you go to a business meeting, or you go to a presentation, or you go to uh, networking after five for the chamber, and you show up in a shirt you've been wearing all day. I actually will take a clean shirt and change before a meeting often. Um, do you polish your shoes? Do you have a fun wardrobe? Uh, do you want to make a mark or do you want to hide in the corner? Do you want to be seen or do you want to be invisible? I don't know. Maybe that's the sign of an extrovert. Maybe it's an introvert, a reluctant extrovert. Um, so here's something for you. And I mentioned earlier about, uh, about Bill Gates. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates do not talk money when they get together. Guess what they talk? Bridge. What do you think put them together? Bridge. And at the end of some event or in the middle, Warren Buffett will say, I've got uh, like a couple extra billion to deal with this week. What do, you, what do you think I should do with it? And Melinda and Bill Gates say, well, we've got this great project, or Bill says it, and, Bill, and Warren Buffett just says, oh, I'll, I'll make sure some money comes your way. It's that easy sometimes, or it's that difficult. I don't know which, but you should become a connoisseur of something, a, a knower of something. Great, generate a, an expertise in your life, whether it's wine, or whether it's whiskey, or whether it's uh, sales professionalism, or fashion, or, or I don't know what you all do, but I think you should become that, that person who people go to and know that you know how to do something better than they do, and they want that knowledge. They think of you as a nexus, the, the hub, the, the leader, the pinnacle of some kind of knowledge pool, and that's what they'll come to you for. So what are some of the reasons to uh, network? Uh, mentoring, of course, you know that for a fact. Uh, best suppliers, market opportunities, find your edge, absolutely. Improve message across platforms. What about boosting your confidence? Seriously, I put on a fresh shirt, I must grow about an inch and a half. 
I just, you know, a nice polished pair of shoes and, you know, I'm just a little bit taller. I, many of uh, my mother's friends, before they have to do something special, will go to the hairdresser. Uh, if that's what works for you, go and do it. I, I, I'll support it. Now, here's the big thing. Is it all a game? Is networking just a game? We can look at it like that. But here's the pr problem in the business world. If you're running your own business, you better make it work fast for you. If you're working for somebody else who pays your way, who provides you with a paycheck, you better make it work fast for them too. If you don't, you're not the, the value that should be brought to that business. Maybe you should go somewhere else. Get good, fast. How many of you believe you can build a network overnight? Well, the hint is already there. No, you can't. Of course you can't. It takes time and effort. How many of you believe that you could drop into a town here in Canada, arrive on a plane to, there's a plane, one more this evening. You could go to Regina, and you arrive in Regina. Could you make a network? In, in very short time, right? Your seatmate on the plane says, hey, I'm from Regina. Oh, yeah, you're into wine? Oh, yeah, you should come and join our wine club. And the next thing you know, you've got a bunch of cronies. You've got a bunch of people that you're connected with. Hey, I'm looking for a house in, in Lively. Uh, oh, well, you know what? I'm really not from Regina, but I've got relatives who I grew up in Lively. And suddenly you've got, right? Kyle's smirking back there. It's true. The network that you build can happen. And can you build it overnight? Well, some people are really good at it. Do you remember the guy who used to drop into communities and he'd get a mortgage and buy a house? That was, it was a big thing a few years ago. He would prove to people that they could get ahead. They could buy a house and then leverage to buy another house. Within a week, he owned like five houses. I don't know. Can you build a network like that? No. What are you going to do next? Have you met everyone in this room? Do you know her name? Oh, you got to be kidding. Do you know her name? No, that's Barb. Susie's back there. Do you, do you know his name? Do you know his name? Of course you do. I know. Do you know her name beside you? You do because you came in together. You, you, yes, you, you've already built one. Why not? I will tell you, that is something. Maybe it's Sudbury. Maybe it's the cold. Maybe it's mittens. Maybe it's coats. <laughs> we were prisoners to these chairs, I'm afraid. But Susie, like the lady beside you, do, have you met her yet? Why not? Shake hands. There we go. Uh, do you, what, what's, their, what's her name? Do you have... You guys, where do you work? Okay, so you're in healthcare? Or were in healthcare? Well, Susie knows about healthcare uh, somewhat. Uh, so she, you know, I think you're going to find some overlap. What part of town do you live in? Well, you don't need to tell me exactly because we're on tape. What part of town do you live in? Uh, near downtown. Near downtown. Where do you live? Oh, well, you're not going like, to overlap quite as much, but maybe you might go to the New Sudbury Shopping get Center together and, you know, and you, oh, I know her. You know, so, yes. Um, have you exchanged business cards, those of you who have business cards? You know, because already here's your first market for your product, right? People right around you. Um, have you found connections and links? At the end, in, what's our last class? When's our last day? May, March? March 20 something or other. Will you turn to, no, I'm going to, will you turn to Phil, who's not going to be here all the time, he's just coming to some of them, the ones that really interest him because he didn't sign up in September. Will you turn to Phil and go, you know, Phil, it's been really nice meeting you. I think, we, are you going to come back next year if there's a class like this? And you say, hey, you know what, why don't we get together for a glass of uh, wine? Uh, sorry, I'm doing the wine thing far too often. How about we get together for a cup of coffee? Hey. I don't know you yet, but I should know you, right? Um, I just think it's really important to, how many of you have got all the way through elementary school, all the way through high school, and don't know the name of the person who sits behind you? It's routine. I, I, I'm shocked by it. Anyways, follow up, meet people again, meet them out of this environment. Hey, you know what? I really enjoyed what you had to say in Startup 101. Would you like to meet for a cup of coffee? 
it sounds to me like you're a, in a really interesting business. Aren't you in like um, employment success? Oh, sorry. Aren't you in employment success? You know what? I have some friends that are moving here from Switzerland or wherever, uh, or New Zealand. Uh, you know what? Aren't you dealing with professionals? You know what? Let's meet for a cup of coffee. Maybe you can help my friends. That's pretty bold. I, I, I don't know. You could say that, maybe. But you know what? Don't be disin... Don't uh, at least be authentic, too. Tell people sometimes why you really want to meet. You can ask people. Like, I find, like, at an event, I, I talk to people all the time. I like to consider myself an extrovert. I love meeting people, talking to people. But to go around here and hand a business card to everyone, I would think that's really cheap. It is. It, that's why I, w I wish I could have shown you that video from Kids in the Hall. No. But maybe it's not the first time you meet them. Maybe it's the second or third time. Or maybe they might actually make that, that connection and say, you know, Philip, we've met three times now. I don't really know what you do. Would you have a business card? I, maybe I'm manipulating it a little too much. Hey, Adam. <laughs> Yay. This is Adam. You should, if you haven't met some Adam yet, he's a, he's a movie star. He actually is. Throwing it out. Right. That's why it's got to be a distinctive business card. Yes. Absolutely. No, I so agree with you. You're very much on the mark, and Philip, you are as well. And some people might say, I'm a little too American in my, my use of business cards. But I do think you have to move ahead. You can't be doing the, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, excuse me, here's my business card. You can't do that either. You can't do the Canadian. Uh, <laughs> yes, you know what I mean, right? Sorry, here, take my card. I, I really want to give it to you, but I, I can't ask you to take it, you know. Yeah, I think I'm probably more that way than I am to hand my card up just willy nilly. Did you say willy nilly? I, did. I said willy nilly too. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> we must be from the same generation. You've got to watch that Kids in the Hall, definitely. There's a British uh, video I was tempted to show you of uh, a man in a, an environment, and he's so busy trying to focus on who's going to bring the most business to him, who's got the most money in the room. Uh, it's icky. It really is icky. It fulfills that first thing, remember where I said some people see networking as being dirty. Um, so what about some takeaways? Because really, you came here and I wanted to give you some things to go with. So uh, stop apologizing, absolutely. Stop saying, oh, I'm not very good at remembering names. Please, please stop saying that. Say, you know what? Thank you for your card. I'm going to remember your name is Adam. Uh, and if you say Adam how many times? Three. Kyle's right, he's got the five. If you say it five times in the next 25 minutes, guess what? it will somehow register within your brain. Whether you'll be able to pick it up tomorrow or the next day and how, what kind of a party or event it was, you may or may not remember quite as well, but let's hope you do. Um, what about basic courtesies? Absolutely. You know, don't say, uh, you know, oh God, what a terrible event this is. Or, um, you know, God, I don't know why my boss sent me here. Say, you know, isn't this great? I really enjoy these networking after five events that the chamber puts on. Uh, oh my God, here's my favorite one. And Kyle, uh, I know, and uh, my, my colleague, Lindsay back there will know, I answer the phone like I mean it, because I do mean it. I'm so happy that you've called, because guess what you've just done? You've called me. I haven't had to call you. You've called me because you 
you really want to do business with us. You really want to have a conversation. You want some solutions. And I shouldn't say, Narcat, when you want. Right? You shouldn't. Right? It should be, hey, thank you for calling NORCAT. How can we help today? What, what, what can I do for you? What, what kind of connection can I, I, I make for you within our organization? And how many of you have call ID? Caller ID. How many of you have it? Do you use it? Do you use it? You do. Absolutely. You've been there. Thank you, Valley Painting, for calling NORCAT. We're here to help. And people will go, oh my god, that's a recording. No, no. You really put your, put your, make your, ah, oh, here's another one. Takeaway. How about you have voice messaging? Thank you for calling. I'm sorry, it's Christmas time and our office is closed. It's January 24th. What are you doing? Update your messages, please. How many of you have even dialed places where the people who answer the, well, the voice message for somebody who doesn't work there anymore? They've been fired. They've left. They're on maternity leave. I don't know what, but they're not there anymore. There should be a message saying, I'm sorry, I'm not able to help you, but my colleague Lindsay is at extension 237. The phone will automatically transfer you to that extension, if you can do that. That is magic. I don't know. Make sure they're up to date. Jeffrey... <laughs> I actually have a very cool button. No, don't go back. I have a very cool button. I can actually go back through my calls and see the ID and say, I got to tell you, I'm so sorry. I was on two other calls at the time. I missed your call. You might have left a voice message. I'm here to help now. And they're like, thank you for calling back. I was going to call you when I had time. Anyways, many entrepreneurs, particularly creatives, aren't uncomfortable with selling. What have you thought about selling differently so that it didn't feel like selling at all? Okay, I want you to reread that whole sentence. Every time you see the word selling, say networking. Are you ready? Many entrepreneurs, I can't hear you. Many entrepreneurs, particularly creatives, aren't uncomfortable with networking. What if you thought about networking differently so that it didn't feel like networking at all? It's true. Stop making it a burden. Just live it. Okay. Yes. And drink martinis. I go to a lot of events. So don't stop here. Don't stand still. Evolve. Improve. Learn. Adapt. And socialize. Your network will not develop, will not grow without social activities. And it doesn't have to involve alcohol. Please don't misunderstand. <laughs> but mine often do. Uh, here I'm drinking, I was at a James Bond evening and I have my lovely assistant Tatiana from Russia uh, with love and she's actually a, a graduate student at Laurentian University and this was an event called, um, um, I think it was called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang at, Laurent at uh, Science North. Uh, so I attend a lot of those events. A special thought on social media. Goodbye Facebook, hello LinkedIn. So the comic set reads, I know you can't see it back there. So I looked at your Facebook page. Oh man, there's no way you're getting this job. <laughs> Be careful what you put on social media. Now, many of you said that you have LinkedIn. How many times have you fed LinkedIn? How many times have you watered your LinkedIn profile and helped it grow? How many times have you fertilized it with the right kinds of things? What kind of things would go on your LinkedIn page? Kyle? Volunteer experience. Absolutely. Well, how about first, let's start with your name, really clearly, and your current title, right? What, after that, what's the number one thing that people should have? So it's interesting. Oh. Your, that little blurb that says whatever it is, or I think your 
I'm I'm glad you mentioned LinkedIn profile because a profile and you mentioned the photo, right? If you don't have a good photo, a current photo, get a professional photo done. Don't, don't do one just from a phone. Seriously, put up a better photo. Yeah, and not a selfie stick either. You. I mean, you don't necessarily have to put your whole job description. Oh no. In, in an item. Just a couple quick points. What you do. You know, what would I put down, Kyle? What would I put down? There we go. Yes, there we go. Um, so here's a guy and a gal at a bar. And those of you who can read it, it says, what are you doing? Oh my God, you're checking out my LinkedIn profile, aren't you? Should we do that? Should we do that with people we meet? I see some people doing this and some people saying this. Uh, I sh we shouldn't do as overtly as this, no. But you know, when you go back home or go back to your office and you go, I just met Kyle McCall, maybe I should check out on LinkedIn what he actually does. If you don't want to appear in searches, like that, you know, it says that, hey, this person checked out your profile, obviously pay for the premium, or you can open up an incognito window. A lot of them, your web browsers now will actually let you open up one that just makes you private. You can use Google Chrome and incognito, and then you can use Google person's name, check out their public profile, and you don't appear in the searches. I love it. I love it. But at the same time, maybe you do want them to know that you were looking at them, right? Maybe you do want to. And let's face it, uh, many people, though, in any of these social media platforms, oh, I just got 1,000 followers. I just got 1,500. You got 1,500? I got 1,700 followers. You think you're good? I got 2,000. No, that's not what it's about. It really isn't. So am I wrong to ask, are you on LinkedIn? Question one. Question two. Since it's launched in 2003, how many people have joined LinkedIn? Just think of these questions as we go. How do you encourage interaction on LinkedIn? Can you find clients or work, do, work on LinkedIn? How can you become a LinkedIn superstar? If we had the opportunity and the technology to do it at this point, including sound, how to develop an awesome network on LinkedIn. You can Google this and find it on YouTube. Uh, it's really quite amusing. Um, don't let the semi-naked figurine suggest that it's going to be in that direction, but really we, um, we should be aware. Oh, there we go. So how am I wrong to ask, how many on LinkedIn? Uh, so if you haven't signed up yet, why not? You use it today, you go home and do it tonight. How many people since 2003? More than 530 million people. Now, are people using it effectively? Are they using it every day? No, but I think it will have more traction in a while. Uh, how do you encourage interaction on LinkedIn? I'm gonna encourage you to go home and watch the video that I made reference to. Uh, can you find clients or work on LinkedIn? Yes, and get this, they'll find you too. If you use the right keywords in your description of what you currently do, there are companies looking for people like you or services that you provide, and they'll find you and reach out to you. Recently, because I listed that I do narration and voiceover, I got an email just yesterday morning that said, would you like to narrate some tourism videos for the country of Croatia? Now, that's pretty obscure, but I will tell you, it's, it really, that made my day. I mean, how many times have, like, I'd like to get a check that just says Bank of Croatia. And, you know, it would be quite interesting. How do you become a LinkedIn superstar? Build a great profile and keep at it. Don't let it drop. Don't use an old picture. Use a fresh picture. Keep adding to your history. If you've done something amazing, because let's face it, none of us do the same job every day, do we? Really, we don't. Adam, do we? No. So each project that you do has a beginning and an end. Say, you know, uh, in the last year, I've just worked on an amazing piece of research. And sure, we can use the word amazing. Why not? Amazing piece of research on, um, what if, I don't want to say exactly what you've been working on, but say things like um, drivers and marijuana use. You know, have you worked on it? So maybe you have. And you know, somebody goes, oh, research, sort of medical related. 
um, Adam's in Sudbury, he's that kind of age, he studied at that school, guess what, let's send him a message. Well, it's done by bots, of course, in most cases. Um, here's a little thing for you, it's from Being5. Hey, computer mouse, it seems like LinkedIn is sort of like a game for adults. The object is con to connect with as many strangers as possible, and the one who gets the most co uh, connects wins. Yes, and don't forget about the bonus points for getting endorsements for things that you have absolutely no idea how to do. Does anybody know about endorsements? So if I write down on LinkedIn that I do networking and Philip looks at it and he goes, yes, Hugh does networking, I get bonus points. Well, I don't really. I, I'm really pleased if you would you know, acknowledge that that's the case. So screen's gone black. It gives us an opportunity to do exactly what Adam's doing. Adam, you've got a question. That's about, that would be about right. Yeah, it's, it's just the, absolutely. More user friendliness. You know, it does reach a certain momentum as well where more people start. And I think, to be honest, how many of you read the Globe and Mail here in this room on a regular basis? So, okay. Not being judgmental, but I will tell you right now, if you don't start reading either the New York Times online or the Globe and Mail in Canada or even the National Post or some newspaper on a regular basis, even if it's just Saturdays, I think you're missing out on some of the things that are happening in the work world, in networking, in the economy. Um, for example, poor Kyle, poor Kyle, he gets snowed almost weekly with articles that I've cut out and said, hey, Kyle, you should know about this. And it, I, I'm guilty, right? He actually cuts out articles from the paper. I, it's true. Yes, I can do it for you too, Lindsay, I promise. If you are working in some area and I know that that's an area of interest for you and I come across an article on, say, for example, being a good entrepreneur in Ontario, or I just read about an amazing fund that just uh, launched a, a $150 million or $500, $500 million investment in, in Ontario businesses, guess who's going to get it? Kyle's going to get it. Kyle, did you know about that before I sent it to you? Yeah, he did. Oh, so you know what? I, whatever. I was spinning my wheels, I guess. But anyways. Do that, and don't just do it for your workmates. You know somebody who works in, say, employment services for people coming to Canada, and you just happen to be on a plane where there was an, a magazine left behind by somebody who's come from Geneva, and you read this English language article, and you, oh my goodness, they're having situations just like us, but they're over there. I wonder if she might be interested in talking to the people in Geneva. Wow, we've just created a bridge between two networks that never existed before. I got an email the other day from a group that said to me, hey, and remember, we get a lot of these kind of things on an average day. It looks to me like you are be, have been searching for things about food in San Francisco. Yes, true. Well, have you heard of Traveling Spoon? No. I go on to Traveling Spoon, contact me, I reach out to the lady, I say, hey, I'd love to talk to you. That's fantastic. I'm in Boston at your time zone. Let's have a conversation on January 31st at 11 o'clock. It's all there for you. The internet makes it so easy. It really does. You don't even need a business card to make it happen. It, you can make contacts way far out there. Adam had a question. Now let's go around the room and see if there are more questions. Susie. Not yet? Not yet. Callum. Not often enough, I will admit to it. I'm not, I was on a plane leaving for Toronto to go and do a television program. There were problems. The WestJet was going, Air Canada wasn't, something was wrong. I pleaded with the lady, I said, please, I have to get to Toronto. I'm doing a television program. And she said, why do you have to go? I said, what time does it start? I said, I have to start, but I have to go to makeup. And she goes, oh my goodness, of course you do. I said, yes, I need two hours in makeup before I do a television <laughs> How often do I change it? Not often enough. It's true. I am guilty of that. How often would you change it? 
Kyle, how often have you changed your LinkedIn photo? Maybe once a year. Okay, Lindsay, have you done it? You need to. Anybody else need to? What are you going to do tomorrow? Change your photo. And what? Okay, fantastic. It's huge. You cannot become a LinkedIn superstar without a photo. An empty box with just the cutout of a guy doesn't work. What if I put a picture of a good-looking guy? Well, that goes back to my authentic thing. <laughs> I don't know. But you can get a great photographer. Like, seriously, in today's world, seriously, you could even walk to Sears if they still were around and they had it. But, you know, I got... I hate to tell you, the nicest picture I got recently is I got an international driver's license. I went to CAA to get my international driver's license, and I don't know, she just picked up the camera and clicked, and I was like, that's the picture I want on my driver's license, my regular one, because it looks great. Right, the other one looks, you know, like we you can't. Like we do. <laughs> right, I just like my cereal with milk, but without killers. Okay, so I, I know you, but I don't know your name. Lynn, we've met before, other places. Oh, always? Always? Okay. Do you have any questions? You must have questions. You're going to email me a question. How about you? Do you have any questions back there? No? Not yet? Not yet? Um, so, Susie? No questions? Ooh, uh, you can just go and do that. Oh, there's a tutorial, absolutely. Um, it's really easy. Just go to LinkedIn. Uh, press uh, new user and set up your password and and then you just start feeding it it's really easy employment history um, education history um, it doesn't have likes and dislikes I hadn't thought about it till now <laughs> does it bother me I'm pretty transparent. People know where I live anyways. I'm, I don't know. A gentleman in the back in the stripes, I don't know your name, but I'm assuming you work with Barb. I do, yeah. You do. What's your name? Mike. Mike. What do you, I won't ask what you do. Do you have a LinkedIn profile? I do. You do? Fantastic. I'll find you. <laughs> but I won't follow you home. Don't worry. Do you have any questions? So, yeah, so I wouldn't mention wine as much as I do, for one, because that, unless you're going to work in the wine industry. Um, there are a number of things to avoid, I think. You know, I mean, you don't want to sound brash. You don't want to sound too bold. You, you know, but, you know, I do think you want to be authentic. You really do want to share with people who you are. And let's face it, do you want to work for somebody who might think that you're not a good fit right from the beginning? Like, why would they hire you? Why would you go to work for them? Y you want to be... Mm, you want to create a good bond between you and your employer right from the beginning. Um, I take the role just for a second, Barb's role. I'm looking for somebody to come and work for me. They've got these and these skills. Listen, I saw your profile on LinkedIn. You're here in Sudbury. You've got uh, some background that interests me. Do you want to meet for a cup of coffee? Uh, I do that, you know, I don't know. That, that's the way I'd go. And I'm sorry, I don't know your name either. I'm Adele. Adele, tell me. Um, questions? I, I would say get as many, I would get that profile up really quickly. Tell them what your interests are. Tell them what you've graduated from, when you graduated. Do we have to go back to uh, high school? No, I don't think so. In fact, I've shortened mine quite a lot. Get some, get some practical uh, work behind you. I mean, that's what everybody says. It would be great if you were 25 and had already 20 years of experience. Well, you do actually. You just don't have 20 years of experience in the work world. Right, so maybe highlight the things you did. In today's world, all Ontario students have to put in 40 hours of volunteer. Well, why not list what you did if those 40 hours were valuable? I donated my 40 hours to 4-H in the Valley and helped uh, a number of children work on this particular project. 
it was really successful. We, ran a, we went to the Ontario, uh, to the Row Winter Fair, and we won a prize. Well, how does that sound? I don't know. That's just me talking. I don't know if it would work really well, but maybe. Let's go around the room to this end. Any questions? Go ahead. To Lucy. Yeah. yeah. Lucy yes. Since we said um, yeah. whatever we said earlier, <laughs> Lucy Goosey is a good uh, way of describing. It. We all have ideas, and let's face it, our card doesn't really define us exclusively as to what we do. Uh, you work at a bank, you're a bank manager, but you love to cross country ski. Uh, you think maybe I'm going to start a business that I would sell cross country skis that uh, are new and improved, and uh, you know n nobody else has that. I've got the exclusive rights to it. Well, I should get a business card. Yes. I mean, we go through iterations. We know of many companies that have started with one name and they've changed to something else. Um, don't buy the big yeah, don't buy the thousand yet. Yeah. Uh, work, work at it. You know what? That is a problem. You know, what if somebody says to you, oh, yeah, didn't you used to work in banking? You, yes, I did. And I learned so many skills in banking that now I'm translating them over to my world of something else. I think we should go looking for the positive in everything we do. Even the jobs or businesses that fail us or we fail them, we know that every restaurant that starts today will likely, seven will die in the first two years out of ten. The eighth will drop off shortly after that. The ninth will disappear probably in year five. And one will survive maybe seven years. Out of 100, only three or four will survive to their 20 or 30th anniversary. It, it's a brutal place to play restaurants, but restaurants are just another sector of the, of the entrepreneurial environment. And many of us, let's face it, our ideas will not be successful all the time. We will have to pivot. We will have to change. We will have to redefine ourselves. We may have to step back. We may have to close. It's not a bad thing sometimes, because you come out of that like a phoenix, and you grow and develop into something new and fantastic. I'm not going to ask the question, but I'm so tempted. Have you had a business that failed? And did you, you benefited from it? I knew that would be the right answer. Yes, of course. I don't think any of us here would believe that we have an idea that's so fantastic that it's going to turn us into millionaires overnight. No, we have to work at it. And sometimes we will take two steps back for every one step forward. And it's the same in our relationships and, and networking. Sometimes we will fail at it. I'll meet Adam, and you know, we'll think, oh God, I don't know about that guy. I, you know what? I, yeah, there's no love between us, that's for sure. Uh, and yet, now, we've been on set together, and I don't know what happened. We just kind of like got together, and I don't know. The other day, I missed you at the gas station. You were at the Shell gas station. And I, was, I told Barb this story, or Susie this story. I was so, I was like, oh my god, that's Adam, and you're just leaving. And I was like, ah, oh, I wish I could have talked to him. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. See? It's just like that. I wish you well tonight. There's no snowstorm. You can drive home safely. If you have other questions, you know I'm here. If you want to sit down and have a cup of coffee with me here at NORCAT during the, or somewhere else, Cup of Joe, wherever, I'm willing to do that. It is important for me in my community that you are successful because my community will be enriched. My network will be enriched. Not my net worth, my network. Thank you for coming this evening. It's been a pleasure.